Thank you for tuning into our Ask the Expert blog. In this edition, we will explore the differences between adrenal insufficiency and adrenal fatigue. My name is Fadi Hanishmuni, an endocrinology and genetics researcher and clinician at the National Institute of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, USA, specializing in endocrine genetics and inborn errors in metabolism. Stress is a natural physical and mental um, reaction to life experiences. When stress lasts for too long and is left untreated, it can cause serious health problems, particularly those affecting the endocrine system. The adrenal glands create hormones to help us control stress, but there has been a long debate and misconceptions about what some adrenal symptoms really mean and whether some adrenal disorders exist. So let's get started with the first question. What if I was told I have adrenal fatigue? Well, adrenal fatigue is not a diagnosis in current medical sciences. It was really coined around 1998 as suboptimal adrenal function resulting from stress and distinguished from true adrenal insufficiency or Addison's disease. But we as physicians need to take the complaints of our patients seriously, and we should really not discount their symptoms or signs as it could really be truly uh, from an underlying medical problem. Therefore, it's important to not discount their symptoms, to listen to their issues, and to try to formulate a differential diagnosis. Second question, what are some harms in treating adrenal fatigue if it does not exist? Well, patients whom have been labeled as having adrenal fatigue often complain of nonspecific symptoms, including tiredness, trouble falling asleep or waking up, low mood, aches and pains, and a need for stimulants like caffeine or tea to get through the day. So treating these symptoms with adrenal or thyroid extracts or unknown formulations such as glucocorticoids or thyroid extracts merely because of the possibility of adrenal insufficiency can in fact lead to many health problems including mood issues, lack of sleep, and muscle complaints. Physicians may need to steer patients away from taking unregulated supplements or formulations with unknown ingredients that are oftentimes recommended by alternative practitioners. Next question. What is adrenal insufficiency and how can I tell the difference? Now, one glaring problem of the adrenal fatigue concept is that the reported symptoms don't match those from true adrenal insufficiency, although there's some considerable overlap. For example, the adrenal fatigue symptoms are mostly nonspecific including being tired or fatigued to the point of having trouble getting out of bed, requiring stimulants such as coffee or tea to get through the day, experiencing poor sleep, feeling anxious, depressed or having low mood, nervous or run down, craving salt and sweet snacks, and having gut problems. Now, for the most part, true adrenal insufficiency, particularly chronic adrenal insufficiency, do not present with those symptoms, but rather present with concerning signs and symptoms, including anorexia, joint aches, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, dry and or hyperpigmented skin, low blood pressure, abdominal pain, and fatigue. Interestingly, adrenal insufficiency can also be genetic or familial and a proper family history should always be asked to try to uncover a genetic form. Next question. Can my symptoms be the cause of something else? If so, what? Well, there are several conditions that present with the non-specific symptoms as reported by patients with the label of adrenal fatigue, including depression, sleep disorders such as obstructive sleep apnea, anemia, menopausal or perimenopausal symptoms, myofascial pain syndrome, otherwise known as fibromyalgia, and other endocrine uh, manifestations, including hypo or hyperthyroidism, and hormone deficiencies such as growth hormone and other hormones. The standard test for excluding an adrenal insufficiency is the corticotropin or the ACTH stimulation test, which is oftentimes not administered by the aforementioned health providers. Now, management and treatment goals are not the same for everybody. So it's important that you ask 
and talk to your doctors honestly about your signs, symptoms, and family history. Thank you for watching. For more topics on hormone health, subscribe to our channel or visit hormone.org.